sagging or bowing shelves are a common problem, but they are easy to fix. Let's look at several ways to do just that. Now, I will start with the easiest ideas first and move up from there. So for number one, let's start moving some of the heavier items to the outside and the lighter items to the middle. Now, this may seem simple enough, but I forget this all the time whenever I'm trying to store stuff away. And hopefully this simple idea will allow your shelf to flex less and last longer. For number two, is it possible to take your warping shelf out, flip it over, and put it back in place? This can be a common fix to a lot of bookshelves, especially if your family reads as much as mine. And by flipping it over, you're actually extending the life of your shelf, because over time it's going to bend it back straight. But if you flip it over and it warps just as bad in the opposite direction, well let's move on to some of the other options. Now for number three, can we add a center leg or a support that braces off the floor or maybe just even the shelf below? For example, if you have a bookshelf that is starting to warp, maybe it's just age or maybe in my case you're overloading it, you can always cut out a piece of scrap wood or in this case MDF and create a center divide that you can now slide into place and that'll give this bookshelf a lot more strength. Now of course you don't want just one center divide, you want one on each of your shelves and that way it gives bracing from the floor all the way to the top. And the best part is, is you can make your center divide out of wood, plastic, metal, whatever you'd like. And then you can put some kind of artistic design on it, making your bookshelf one of a kind. Now for number four, we might want to consider adding some more shelf pegs, but not along the sides. We actually want to do this at the back where the shelf intersects the wall. You can get these pegs in metal or in plastic, but in either case, you're going to have to drill a hole in the wall to insert them in. If you're unable to drill any holes, you might want to consider some of these little screw-in pegs. You literally just take a standard Phillips screwdriver and screw right into your wall. And if they don't look very pretty, you can take some of these little caps they come with and make them look a little bit nicer. And of course, if you don't care what the shelves look like, just take some standard screws and stick under there. If putting a hole in your wall for a peg is just not an option, then we need to look at number five. And that is getting one of those self-adhesive little pieces that has a shelf support built in. Let me show you. I bought a small box of these little supports. One of these sticks on a wall and one of them provides the support. These little units slide together really easily, but you do have to be real careful and make some good measurements before installing these because once you get it sticked onto the wall, it might be a little bit hard to remove. But overall, that should provide plenty of support. Another benefit to these little stick-on shelf supports is you might want to shelf in a location you normally can't drill a hole into. These should work nicely. Moving on to number six, we have the Shelf Stiffener by Hangman. This is a heavy duty bracket that slides directly over the front of your shelf, giving it plenty of strength. On the good side, since this bracket just slides on, it doesn't require any additional nails or screws to install. This also acts as a great front edge protector for your shelf. So whenever you're putting tools up, if you bang it into it, you don't have to worry about damaging them. I've also seen these in a few other configurations, some with a little bit higher lip, some with a little hook on them. That way you can use these in addition to just protecting your shelves. There are a couple downsides to using one of these. First off, I've only been able to find them in a 3 quarter inch thickness. Therefore, if you have thinner shelves, well, you're kind of out of luck. Also, I would consider these to be a little bit more on the expensive side. But if by chance you are interested in a little bit more information, I'll put a link to that in the description. Now for number seven, instead of a metal front edge, how about we look at making a solid wood front edge? I've heard of this called as front molding or a face frame or even an apron. This option will allow you to choose the color and species of wood to match the rest of your home or just your shelves. Plus, you're able to modify the wood to the exact shape and size of your shelf, making it the perfect fit. And then there's a few different ways we can attach this molding to the front of our shelves. Let me show you the easiest first. For the first option, we're just going to keep the wood pretty basic. You want the height of this little molding to be definitely higher and thicker than your shelf because that's where it gets a lot of its strength. As for the depth, well, that's totally up to you. Now, I like to attach it to the front with it just sticking up a little bit higher to give it a little protection from things falling off. And to attach it, you can use nails, screws, or even glue. Now, if you want something a little more fancy than just a solid piece of wood, this right here is just a rabbit or a section of the wood cut out. Now, this is a solid piece of wood. If you don't feel comfortable doing this in one solid piece, you can actually take two pieces, as you can see here, and I've attached them together to look pretty similar. And to attach this to the shelf, we're just going to use that lip to actually hang it over the edge of our shelf and then attach it in place. Now, the piece that we made with two separate pieces of wood does the same exact thing. It looks pretty similar. For option number three, instead of cutting a rabbit, I actually cut a dado in the wood. This allows you to have a top and bottom section and just looks a little bit more clean on the edge. Plus, if you cut the size just right, it should be able to slide over your shelf 
It'd be a nice snug fit. If you plan on going the rabbit or dado route, please be careful because cutting these long strips of wood like that can be very dangerous. Looking at number eight, we may have the option of using what I like to call a shelf cleat, not to be confused with a French cleat. This is just a solid one by two furring strip that we're going to attach underneath the shelf all the way against the wall. We're gonna make sure that the screws are gonna go straight into the studs, providing a lot of rigidity so that the shelf does not flex. You will sometimes find these cleats under large cabinets to give them strength as well. Plus your wall cleat can either be painted or stained to match your shelving or just to match the wall. That way it looks a little bit nicer and it's harder to see. And here's a little tip. If you use your wall cleat and combine it with number seven, that face molding, using both of these at the same time on your shelf will make it very strong. With number nine, maybe we should add a thin backer board to our shelf. And the great thing about a backer board is there are a lot of options you can use. You can use hardboard, you can use plywood, you can use pegboard, you can even use a cardboard box if it's stiff enough. And here's an example. These are often used on the back of bookshelves to give them strength. Otherwise, they'd be pretty flimsy. This option can also be used in the workshop because here recently I built a workbench with a top shelf and it was quite flimsy until I added a backer board which made it very solid and stable. The great thing about a backer board is you can use nails, screws, or maybe even glue. But if you're gonna do a bunch of them, I'd consider getting a brad nailer. It just makes it a lot faster. There are two things to consider if you're going to use this option. First off, you're gonna need access to the back of your shelving. If you don't have that, then this might not work for you. And secondly, you're probably gonna need a second person to help you hold it in place and get everything lined up as you're adding those nails, or it could be a little bit difficult. Jumping forward to number 10, you could always add a custom touch to a set of shelves, giving it additional strength as well. For example, in a previous video, I designed a set of shelves with diagonal legs. This not only gave it a nice artistic touch, but it also gave it a lot of strength. These shelves were actually built for a retail shop and got used for several years. They held up great and they look great as well. And if by chance you're interested in seeing that video, I'll put a link to it in the description. For number 11, how about we add some cross beams using some angled metal. The angled metal can be used on the top of the shelf or even on the bottom. And when doing it this way, it's a nice edge protector as well. But of course, it doesn't look all that pretty, so it might be better even underneath the shelf, which would probably give it even more strength. But again, it's probably not the prettiest in this fashion. Now, if we were to use some front edge molding as well and put that on the shelf, that'll hide that metal and still look really great, giving this a ton of strength. If you're planning on shopping for some of these, there are a few things to keep in mind. Most stores have a variety of lengths and sizes and heights, so make sure you know your measurements so you can buy the correct ones. Also, this particular one is made out of aluminum and they sell some out of steel that are much stronger. Also, they come in a variety of names, angled iron, angled steel, angled aluminum. Just use any of those and most of your salespeople know exactly what you're talking about. If you're interested in knowing exactly how to attach the wood to the metal in the easiest process, I highly recommend watching a video by The Honest Carpenter. He did a nice step-by-step -step process showing exactly how to attach the two with the most benefit for you. I'll put a link to that in the description below, so I highly recommend checking that out if you're interested in this step. I've also made some other tips and tricks videos for the house and for the garage, and I'll put a link to some of those in the description, so make sure you check those out. But first, Watch this one. 